love coffee like myself, but are confused about all the different conflicting information on the market about whether it's healthy for you or not, then you're gonna love today's video because we're gonna talk about everything about coffee, whether it's healthy for you or not, how much you should be drinking if it is healthy for you, and what types of coffee are the best to drink. <laughs> Hey everybody, how you all doing? Now I love coffee, okay? And I'm not alone because there are millions of daily coffee drinkers out there. But today I'm gonna try and not be too biased to try and make sure I provide you guys with the information once and for all about whether coffee is healthy for you or not. And I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time because I get a lot of emails on this, mainly because there are so many conflicting information about coffee out there. One week coffee is good for you, the other week it isn't. And a few days ago I got an email from a lady called Michelle in the UK and she was just really sick and tired of all the information and she just said, Peter, can you tell me if coffee is good or not? I love my coffee and I want to know if I can continue drinking it. Well, today we're going to really simplify this because you're going to realize in a second that once you know how everything works, how the research work, how the information work, what coffee you should and shouldn't be drinking, you'll understand that it really isn't that complicated. So let's get going by looking at the type of coffees that you should be drinking. So coffee that we'll be talking about today and coffee that you should be drinking, the best kind of coffee, are basically coffee beans, grind it down, and then you use one or other brewing technique to make that coffee, okay? That's the coffee we're talking about. I'm not gonna go into different brewing techniques, I'm not gonna go into different kinds of coffee, but that is the best kind of coffee. So instant coffee is not necessarily very healthy for you, and neither are these little capsules that you normally see, okay? So when we talk about coffee, we're talking about coffee beans being grinded down and then brew. Now, there are many different brewing techniques. One that's quite popular these days is what I call cold brewing, and that's basically something where you make the coffee, it can brew for half a day sometimes, and it basically is cold, and it tastes like very strong cold espresso. I like my coffee hot, so when I grind mine down, I make it in what they call a Buletti, which is a specific brand, but it's basically a very old type of coffee machine from Italy, and it's basically manual and I love doing it because it's a bit of an event every morning. But the main thing we're talking about here is coffee beans, grind it down and then brew it. We're not talking about instant coffee. In fact, coffee experts call instant coffee basically processed coffee, okay? Because there can be a lot of fillers in that kinds of coffee. So number one, that is what we talk about and that's the best kind of coffee to drink. Next, let's look at the different kinds of research. Over the last sort of 15 years since I've been in this industry, I've sort of seen a pattern sort of develop and you mainly get three types of research that's been done on coffee. And first, let me say, coffee has over a thousand chemical compounds, okay? So there's a lot of ingredients in coffee, but it basically falls within the next three types of research that I've seen people do and companies do. Number one, coffee is bad for you. Okay, that's the first kind of research you see and you hear it in the news and they all say we should stop drinking coffee. And that's normally when they have research, one of those compounds, normally caffeine and the effects it can have on you when you drink it in excessive amounts. Okay, so excessive amounts of caffeine can be bad for you for many different reasons. And that's normally when you get a research study that comes out and they tell you coffee is bad for you and you shouldn't be drinking coffee. The second kind of research is when they say coffee is all good for you. And that is when they have done a study on the benefits or on the ingredients in coffee that can be good for you, like the antioxidants, a lot of antioxidants in coffee. And then you look at all the benefits that antioxidants can bring. And those can be anything from decreasing risk of cancers, diabetes, etc., etc. And that's when you normally get a study that comes out and say, drink up coffee is good for you. And then the third type of research I have seen is when they talk about not whether coffee is healthy or unhealthy for you, but whether it can help you achieve something like, can it help you lose fat faster? Can it help you um, increase your intensity as far as your workouts? Can it help you stay awake? So it's more about can coffee help you do something specific and help improve a certain type of activity, for example, without the whether it's healthy or unhealthy for you debate involved in that specific studies. So those are basically the three kind of studies you get. And that's why there's so much confusion. One study comes out and talk about the negative and the side effects of the ingredients that can be bad for you if you use it in excessive amounts. And the next one talks about the 
positive side effects about the good ingredients like the antioxidants. So which of these guys are right? They're all right, okay? Excessive amounts of caffeine can increase your cortisol levels, which has some negative side effects. It can affect the quality of your sleep, etc., etc. So excessive amounts of caffeine does have negative side effects. So it comes down to how much you drink. Drink it in a certain amount though, and it's also good for you. Those antioxidants have a lot of benefits. I've already mentioned some of them. It can decrease risks of different cancers, diabetes, even decrease some inflammation in your body. And there's actually quite a lot of research about how coffee can help improve your health. And then finally, coffee can help increase your intensity through workouts. It can help you stay awake longer. That's why some of us actually drink it sometimes. And it can actually help with fat loss. So once you understand all of this, that coffee has antioxidants really good for you, excessive amounts of caffeine is bad for you, and it can help you do certain things and improve things like have a better workout, now you understand why there's so much different and conflicted information out there. The secret is knowing how much to drink and experimenting with how much to drink because this is the next step. How much should you drink to get the benefits without all the negative side effects that excessive caffeine can bring with it? That comes down to how your body metabolizes caffeine. They say that you basically get three different kinds of people as far as metabolizing coffee. Fast, medium and slow. So if you're someone whose body metabolizes coffee slower, then you're going to be able to drink less coffee before you start getting into that negative side effects. If your body metabolizes coffee quickly, you'll be able to drink a bit more. So if you metabolize coffee slowly, like I believe I do, I can normally drink two coffees. If I drink a third one, I start getting jittery. I don't feel well. I don't like that feeling. So I normally stick to one cup of coffee a day in the morning. Other people can drink up to four cups of coffee, maybe even five, and still feel okay if their body metabolizes caffeine quickly. It comes down to you need to experiment with what works for you and what doesn't work for you, and then try and stay within that limit. They obviously say two to three cups of coffee works for most people, but like I've just mentioned, for some people that will be fine, for some people that will be too much, and for other people, they'll be able to handle more cups of coffee. So that, guys, is all there is to be coffee. So let's sum this up. Yes, you get ingredients in coffee that's good for you. You get ingredients in coffee that's bad for you if you drink coffee in excessive amounts. And then, yes, coffee can help you with things like having a better workout, not fall asleep, that can be good or bad for you depending on when you drink your coffee. You obviously just don't want to drink it late at night because that can interrupt your sleeping patterns and the quality of your sleep. But once you understand that different research and different studies look at different aspects of coffee and will then give their opinion on the research they have done and on that specific ingredient, you will know that yes, some studies is going to come out and tell you coffee is bad for you if you drink it in excessive amounts. Other studies are going to come out and say coffee is great for you, drink more. You simply need to find out how well your body metabolizes coffee and then stay within that limit. Don't drink excessive amounts of it and if you got to a point where you're addicted to it, you probably want to do a bit of a coffee detox and then start again and try and be more aware of how your body feels after one, two or three cups of coffee. And then finally, remember, we're talking about black coffee here. As soon as you start adding sugar, milk or any other ingredients, the coffee structure and ingredients obviously change and then can become a lot unhealthier depending on what you put in there. But guys, that is basically how coffee works, all the research works. So. If you love your coffee, you don't need to give it up. Just stay within the limits. Don't drink an excessive amount of it and you will be just fine. That is based on the latest research that we know up to this point. Maybe in a month or two, there will be research out here to tell you that coffee is really bad and we shouldn't drink it. If it happens, I'll be back on here telling you about it. So if you like coffee, click on the like button. I think I'm going to get a lot of likes this week. But if you like this video, click on the like button. If you want to subscribe and see more videos like this on a weekly basis, click on the subscribe button. And then if you have any more information or feedback on coffee, put it in the comments box below. Once again, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.